Okay, happy 200! Welcome to the 200th episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. I can't believe I'm still doing this show after seven years of producing content for all of you. Thank you so much for your support. This channel has changed a lot since it first started. When I first started, it was all about mallet reviews and that was literally all I had was just this marimba and some mallets and nothing else in the studio. It was so quiet. I think I got like 100 views on each video. Seven years I've been doing this show. Seven years I've been producing episodes like this. Seven years since I bought this marimba for the first time in cash with my own savings. It's just been a really great journey so thank you so much for following along. I can't believe we're still making videos and I'm very happy to be doing so. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads. And today's episode is going to be a very special edition of Roasting Myself. Roasting Myself! Special edition! Roasting Myself is a segment where I watch my old performances, mine, and I absolutely roast myself. And being reflective and evaluating my past performances is something that I'm a big fan of. It's reflective practice and it helps me grow as a person. The video that I want to roast today, well, I should say videos, is a set of videos that I've been afraid to touch since 2016. So in 2016, I was in my fifth year of my university studies. I was 22 years old. I was doing a master's degree, a master of music. It was a one year degree and I was supposed to finish it at the end of 2016 which meant of course I needed to do a recital and I did a recital on 29 November 2016 it was called marimba fun that's right we are roasting my master's recital <laughs> If you want to watch the whole Masters recital and I'm warning you, it's not going to be very good. You can check it out over here. It's been on my channel for well, pretty much the entire time my channel has been up. It's better than my really old videos, but still not that great. I mean, look at these comments. Worst Merlin performance I've ever listened. You think that's bad? Search Uta Kremakabra at Adam Tam. Jesus, I never knew someone could play this piece so terribly. You're not wrong. <laughs> now last year I did redeem myself with Merlin. Here's my most recent recording of it, which I did publicly in a concert in March 2022. And that was actually, for my standards, quite an okay performance. Still not like world leading, not competition winning, not anything like that. But it was much better than the performance that you're going to see here. But we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so today we're going to start with Etude in E Minor by Pius Chang. So a very popular piece. I'm sure you've heard of it before countless times, especially if you've been on the competition circuit, audition circuit. Very popular. Pius Chang is awesome. I've played a few other Pius Chang pieces since. Yeah, he was one of my inspirations when I grew up. So I was thinking, okay, I'll put Pius's piece into this. Um, this one I think was maybe slightly better than Merlin, if I remember correctly, but I don't know. We'll see. You can see my marimba one easy, which is in this video, is actually a lot higher than I would set it nowadays. I think I had it set to 94, which is exceptionally high for my standards. I don't normally play with the marimba like up here, which is something that is clearly evident in this video. <laughs> so I think that was part of the reason why my playing was a bit weak. I think the river was too high for me, for my height. And also I'm playing with Robert Van Sice mallets from Vic Firth. Van Sices. I used to be obsessed with Van Sices in the first two years of doing the studio, 2016, 2017. I used to say in every video, Van Sice, Van Sice, Van Sice, Van Sice. And yeah, I had started to learn about graduated sets back then and I had a few mallets, but not much. I maybe had only about five pairs total. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good. I would never touch mallets like Van Sice these days. Uh, now I have my signature series. But yeah, my signature series couldn't be any further from a Van Sice mallet. So it's gonna be interesting. And and I'm just gonna play it and we're gonna see how I went, okay? And I might comment as I go or I might be completely cringing. Who knows? Let's roast myself. All right, we got the nice walk on. I probably brought up the mallet a bit too soon. Okay, it's not terrible. Oh, that size uh, doesn't sound that good. I already got the first third one. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> All the runs are wrong. I'm hit. Oh, wrong. I'm trying to phrase it. I can. I can. Yeah, I'm trying to make the accompaniment notes softer. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, but, but you can see because I'm playing so small, because I'm worried about the mantises being too hard. Wrong bass note. <laughs> oh, the accuracy is shocking. <laughs> I hit. Oh, whoa! <laughs> I hit so many planks and stuff. 
this bar doesn't exist in the music. Oh, these are all wrong. How am I hitting so many wrong notes? That run was okay. That's probably the only thing that was correct in that section. Okay, whatever. I think I'm slowing down at the end of every phrase as well, which is a little bit too obvious. I'm hitting it so articulately. There's like no nuance to any of the phrasing. I would never play it like this in today's context. Oh, the bass notes are wrong. It's like, I know what the notes are, but I'm just hitting them completely randomly. Oh, that was terrible. At this point, I didn't know how to learn music by shapes as well. What the? I clicked like 30 shafts in that passage. That's terrible. Okay, this part is softer. That's good. But I'm still like slowing down too much, I think. At least I got the notes correct this time. Ah, oh, stop clicking the shaft. It's too high. The is too high. I used to think getting it higher would make it easier, but you see it's like so weak because it has no projection or anything. Okay, this part's... Oh, that was terrible. So many like sevens instead of octaves. like no power because there's no weight. There's no weight at all. Oh, uh, uh. Snap, snap, snap. So too many shots. And it doesn't sound good. See, like it just sounds like I'm slamming it every time. I played a C sharp instead of A sharp. I had to redo that section because it was wrong. Ooh. Oh my god, so many wrong notes. And then look at me finishing it as though I've done the coolest thing ever. <laughs> finishing it as though I've done the coolest thing ever. Okay, let's stop for a second. That ending was like so shoddy. <laughs> Nice. The chromatic part was fine, but I mean chromatics are easy. They should be the easy part. And then like just the chords were all wrong. They were all like sevens. Really, really messy. Let me think. What are the good things I can say about this performance? <laughs> Okay, what I will say for my 22 year old self, at least I kept it going. I didn't stop at any point. If you wanted to be really reaching, you could say if it was for an uninformed audience, it would be passable. Yeah, that's kind of where it stops. I mean, there's just too many mistakes. The tempo is there, sure, but it's also like I'm slowing down at every phrase and it's not correct. Like it's better that the piece is a little bit on the slower side, but more correct in my opinion. Yeah, okay, there's, there's nothing else that's good. Let's talk about what I didn't like. Okay, firstly, the marimba height. As you can see, it's at 94, it is way too high and I'm snapping so many shots. Like the birch is constantly striking the edge of the bar, the resonator, everything, because I'm not able to actually bounce off the instrument. I think when I was striking the bars, the mallets are not even like parallel, they're like slightly above parallel, like the angle is a bit like that. And then because the van sizes are like really small headed mallets, it's more likely you're gonna hit that massive part of shaft as opposed to the head, which is really small. Speaking of the mallets, because they weren't graduated, I think I had it as 112, 113, 114, 114. So back then, all the mallets I bought were in the medium soft to medium hard range. I never bought soft mallets, I never bought grad sets. To be fair, grad sets weren't that popular back then. If they were, they were really expensive, like John Joffrey and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't buy graduated sets. So then the mallets, which is like all really medium sounding. And that's why all of the bass notes and stuff sound really mid. There's no weight, there's no warmth, there's nothing. If I had gone for something more similar to my mallets like this, where the heads are a little bit bigger, they're warmer material, there's a bit more weight to them, and graduated, most importantly, like an actual softer mallet at the bottom, I think we could have done something better. Yes, I know medium soft is technically graduated, but the van size medium soft is very different to say, 
this kind of medium soft. Then there was the accuracy, really bad accuracy. Like recently I actually relearned this for a friend of mine who was learning this as well. I played it way more accurate just by, you know, fooling around and just getting it together in my own private practice time than this where I supposedly spent months preparing for this performance and there's just so much inaccuracy. I think it was more the way I was practicing. I kind of just was like, oh, you know, it's close enough and I don't really need to practice it until it's perfect, it's good enough. I feel like I was just hitting a whole bunch of wrong notes, especially things like octaves and big intervals where it's painfully obvious when it's wrong. I also had very limited voicing. You couldn't really tell where the melody was most of the time because all of my scare runs were like, doo -doo 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 like just blasting them out and it doesn't help that the van sizes by nature are super articulate. I also back then had no idea how to control tone, I had no idea how to use weight so you could see I was basically just using the same method of wrist, wrist and sometimes finger but mostly wrist weight. I didn't really know how to use body weight or arm weight or anything like that. I didn't really know how to do, you know, through the bar or produce those sort of rich, darker sounds that you kind of need for more emotive music like this. So everything kind of just sounds very bright. You may also notice that I'm really skinny in this video. So during this period of time, I had a mild eating disorder. I wasn't eating well. I would eat maybe one meal a day and I also didn't exercise. I drank a lot of coffee and it was just really bad. So. That also kind of affected my ability to play and my stamina and my strength. Like you just can't really hear any projection. So all these factors combined together, it means that this performance of Edge in E minor was just, if I had to rank it, it would be like a solid E. There's just so many things that need to be worked on. The piece needs to be reworked basically from the ground up. If this was one of my students, I'd say, no, it's not good enough. Take it slower, change the mallets, bring the marimba down and let's work from there. Oh. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of that. Please feel free to roast me as well. I'm very happy to be roasted about this video because it's the whole point. And I hope for all the people who commented those negative comments on the video, this is your time to shine. Like literally, go for it. But if you're enjoying the roasting so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's check out the piece that we were talking about the most, which is... Okay, so here's the start of Berlin. I'm going to start it pretty much in the same way. I remember I had a trap table in the back with my mallets, which is funny considering I literally only used fan sizes. <laughs> this is going to be a really interesting one because again, the river is jacked up so high and this was at the point where I had already played six pieces before this. So I was feeling a little bit fatigued and I was thinking, oh, is this going to be good? But what I will say is in this recital, I think Merlin was the piece I spent the most time on. I spent so much time on it, trying to make everything join together, trying to memorize it. And it's funny because the time I spent doing it in this recital versus when I prepared it for competition in 2018 versus when I prepared it for the performance last year in 2022, so different. Like I remember in 2016, I was kind of just like, okay, I'm just going to rote learn this. And if it sounds bad, let's move on. 2018, I was like, I'm going to actually annotate the score and find things that I need to work on that are weaker and bring out important details, but I didn't do it enough. 2022, I went full ham with the annotation. I went full ham with relearning it. And I think that's why it ended up being better. Let's see how this one goes. All right, we got the walk on again. I'm so skinny. <laughs> I've literally like those clothes that I'm wearing, I've literally given them away because I can't fit them. Okay, it's a lot slower than how I play it now. This part is wrong, but it actually sounds okay, <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, why am I doing that? It's too loud for the beginning. It's supposed to be P here. Wrong notes. Wrong notes. Sharp click. See, I've already got so many mistakes, it's only been like less than a minute. Rushing. <laughs> it's easy when you're using bad size. Jeez. Why is there such a big gap there? There's no big gap there in the piece. The voicing needs to be better. It's too loud. That's wrong as well, it's missing a note. I'm hitting that bass note so hard. I uh, missed, missed one reputation of it. So inaccurate, and then the over the head, too much, too much. Oct octaves need to be right, otherwise it just sounds bad. Okay, this softer loud thing was good. Wrong 
this. Uh, yeah, so th that part is actually wrong. I've relearned it correctly in 2018. This part is way too loud. It's like not even the peak and it's so loud. Wrong. I skipped. I skipped the bar. So I've literally just made this part up. <laughs> wrong, wrong. This part is so soft! <laughs> it's so weak! <laughs> oh no! It's so weak, there's no projection at all. Okay, here we go. Wrong notes. <laughs> I copied that breathing thing off a video that I watched and it was... It's so wrong what I'm doing here. Didn't leave enough space. This part is okay, but I'm playing the wrong notes. No, no. I made that part up completely, that's not what it is. <laughs> this is my favourite part in Melbourne, actually. Why did I slow down? There's no writ. Da 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 da. Bang. Oh, I hit the resonator. <laughs> what? How do you even do that? It's a square interval. Okay. And then soft. Yeah. Ah, wrong. Here we go. It's so weak. There's no projection. I'm not playing with any weight. I'm just like hitting it hard. That's not good. Okay. Ah, see, I tried to slam it and it doesn't work. It's like all arm and all tension. It's no good. Rolling is no good. I'm not changing the roll speed or anything. There's no dynamism about it. Too many times, that's not what it was. What was that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, oh, that's painful. That's painful. I didn't know how to roll, right? I could have tilted or something to, to make that softer. I didn't know. These are the wrong notes. I made up this part completely! Uh, yeah, I, I think I got lost here and I totally, <laughs> totally made it up! Wow, I became Andrew Thomas. I wrote, I rewrote the piece. <laughs> What is that roll? Why is it so fast? Yeah, the freeze. Okay, I still do that freeze thing to this day. This part is okay, actually. What? How am I hitting the shaft so many times? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, this part... I got kind of schooled for doing a freeze like that in the competition, so I probably wouldn't do it like that anymore. But yeah, I tried to do it without looking, which is kind of a... Trying, trying a bit too hard. Trying, trying to be too smart. Okay, this is, this is the iconic part. And I don't think it's going to be good. But here we go. The order is right. But the notes are wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. Don't applaud that. That does not deserve applause. 
Oh, look at me, thinking that I saved the world or something. No. 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 That's... <laughs> that is actually much worse than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, no. Okay, to be honest, that actually seemed more prepared than the etude in E minor. Like, there was definitely more... I felt like I knew more about the piece, whereas Etude, I felt like I kind of just scrapped it together, which if I remember correctly, that is probably what I did. So bad. But as you could hear me remarking throughout the piece, there's a lot of sections that I'm just making it up. I'm literally like making up something that sounds like what I think it's supposed to sound like, but it's not. Like, it's so wrong. Again, just like I said with the Etude, my note accuracy is literally at like a 47% in this video. It's not good at all. Like, okay, sure, you know, at that point in time, I was happy about it and I was happy that it was done and stuff, but this is kind of the reason why I had to kind of play catch up as I started my post-university career from 2016 to now. Like I've had to catch up to all of the people that are so good, that are way younger than me. The same things apply as they did with the etude. So the height of the marimba is playing a large factor as to why I'm not able to get a good stance. I'm kind of slamming it every time I want to get a loud sound. I'm slamming it and going over my head, which is a very fake way of making more sound and it doesn't work very well. Octave runs for the most part were all pretty bad. Like they were all inaccurate or really weak. And I can already tell it's also the angle I'm approaching the bars and stuff is not good. Like I'm always hitting it on all the corners or the edges or or the resonator even. That's why you're hearing all these click, click, click everywhere. It's just really bad. I think all my scores from this period of time were all unmarked. There was, if there was any marking, it'd be like a little bit of pencil in the corner, but I never did what I do now, which is like full highlighting. Let me know if I should do a video on score annotation, by the way, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. But yeah, I used to not annotate at all. So that's why I know so little about the piece. That's why I don't visually remember things because the score I was using was just a black and white photocopy of the score that I bought later on. I just couldn't see anything and I'd just be like, oh yeah, that sounds kind of right. I guess that's right. <laughs> so yeah, it's an interesting feeling to know that I should have done many things better. Obviously, I was a very different person back then in 2016. I didn't even know if I was going to become a professional percussionist, even though I did have this studio by then. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I also had plans to maybe become just like a full-time teacher. I also had plans to maybe study doctorate instead of just doing this studio stuff. Like I had plans to sell my marimba at one point. It was just a really crazy time. I can understand that, but at the same time, could have done better. And I think the comments that are on this video about Merlin are totally warranted. But yeah, if you're at any stage of your life where your performances are looking like this, I totally encourage doing some reflective practice like this. Have a watch of the videos. Don't be afraid to confront your old videos, your old weaknesses to see if there's anything that can be better. And that's what I've kind of been doing for the last seven years. <laughs> it's just constantly revisiting myself. And admittedly, towards my younger days when I was 22, 23, I wasn't really that good at it because I would keep telling myself, oh, I'm so good. My name's Adam Tan. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I've found it's a really great thing to just focus on what you can do better all the time because there is no cap to how good you can be. If you enjoyed today's roasting video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching my 200th episode of the studio. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see me roast some more of my videos. I've still got heaps from this year as well as the 2017 recital that I did, which I would also like to roast because, <laughs> hmm. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more of that. And if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads because I'm uploading every single week. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. Then I'm there.